In this video, we're going to look at an It's Learning discussion. I'm going to tell you what it is, how it works, how to create it, and look at setting permissions and how to use reports. Let's get started. So a discussion is literally the same thing as a classroom discussion. It's just done online. One thing you need to know about a discussion is that everything is taking place between the entire class and the teacher. So if you think about an assignment, when a student does an assignment, only the teacher and that one particular student submitting sees the assignment. On a discussion, everything that happens, everyone in the course sees. So typically, you would be having some kind of discussion around a question that involves opinions or ideas, not some kind of questions that there's specific concrete answers to. Um, online discussions um, can work really well for some of your students who don't like to talk out loud in class. This gives them a way to share their thoughts and their opinions without having everyone's eyes on them. So we did have a lot of students that flourished with discussions during the online learning days. Now here on the screen you see an example of a discussion it is very common for a teacher to embed a video or have a link where the students have to watch or read something to begin the discussion. And then there's typically questions that you're having the students reflect on. Now notice down here, this particular teacher told the students they need to make one thread post answering the questions for themselves and then respond to at least one other peer's post. This is pretty common, and for any of you that have taken a graduate class, this is, was always the uh, method that the professor used in my courses. Typically, you had to respond to two or three people. So I actually want to show you how this works so you just have an idea of how people reply to a post. So after they read all the information, they scroll down. Notice there's a button here that says Start New Thread. So the student would click here. It would come up with subject and they can just put in whatever they want their title to be and then down here in the text this is where they would put their response. Now notice you have the same rich text editor features that we're used to seeing um, so colors, bold, size, fonts. Um, they can insert pictures but more importantly they can record their voice and they can record a video. So for your younger students if they are really good spellers, can't read very well, um, they can actually just record themselves. So this is something you may want to show them that they can do. So they put in all their information, click Save, and then that response is added down here to the list. They can click on other students' posts, read their posts, and then they can reply back to other students. Now, I'm in this discussion as a student, and I want to point out a couple things for you here. Notice I posted here, Thoughts on Punishment. It sees any other posts by anybody else in the class. If for some reason as a student I realize I made a mistake or I need to change my posting, I can click on my subject of my post and notice I have a limited amount of time that I can change that post. So I still right now have an edit button. So I could click that edit button and make a change if I need to. Um, but at some point in time, that's going to run out. Notice it's counting down. So it's, it is very important for students to know that they need to be thoughtful in their response um, and they need to be appropriate in their responses. Now I'm going to switch over to my teacher account. And here I am in, it, in as myself. And if I go down, notice I have the ability to delete things. So if a student does post something inappropriate, students get into a bad disagreement, argument, something of that sort, I can check the box in front of a post and click delete that particular thread. So you always are the moderator. Um, I'll be completely honest and let you know that the discussion feature in its learning it's always been something that I feel needs some changes. Um, I really wish that a student could post first before they see other students' responses. 
that is not an option in here. It's something we've asked its learning for. So just be aware of those, those little idiosyncrasies and uh, just be careful. Just know that you have some ability to delete things, um, but there are some limitations in here as well. Now let me show you how you would create your own discussion. So I'm going to open up my tree over here and I'm in my folder so I'm going to click add and if you scroll down under activities you will see there's the discussion option so you just click discussion give it a title down here once again using all of your rich text features you could record yourself you could um, do audio video recordings you can embed a video Type up all your information. What do you want the kids to do with this particular discussion? After you have all your information and directions there, underneath, I recommend to never allow anonymous posts. You're just opening up a can of worms there, so don't use that. Categories, um, I use these one time, didn't like them, so I always leave that on no. And then active, are you ready for the kids to actually do it? Um, if it's going to be something they're doing in the future, once again, we would recommend set the time span. When do you want it to activate? When do you want it to deactivate? It is very important with discussions that when you are done with them and the kids have finished that discussion, do make sure you go back in and deactivate it or make sure you put a stop date on it. Um, you don't want to leave a discussion open and kids get in there and start discussing things without you moderating. Um, it's just, once again, just keeps the kids safe, keeps you safe. So just always make sure that you close or deactivate a discussion when you are done with it. So after you have your information, all you have to do is hit save, and then your discussion is ready to go. Now one of the things that is a little clunky about a discussion is that when you are going through and you're reading people's posts, you click on it, you open it, you read it, and then you have to click back to discussion and then you have to choose the next one and that's kind of difficult and especially if you're trying to keep track of what students have or haven't done that can be really difficult um, I want to point out a reports tab that you may or may not have noticed before right here to the right of the discussion tab there's a reports tab if you click on that it's actually going to show you all of the students in that particular course that you have the discussion in um, and it's going to tell you how many threads they actually started themselves and then how many responses or replies did they have to anybody else's. Um, so that's just a quick way to check numbers, but if you actually click on the student's name, it's going to pull it up and show you is it original thread, is it a comment, and then you can click on just that particular um, post for that student. So that may or may not help you. Um, another thing is if your list is really long, there is a drop down here that shows you each of the students so you can get to different pages a little bit faster. Now the last thing I want to talk about in terms of a discussion involves permissions. If you watched my video on assignments, I talked about the fact that you can just make one assignment and use that for all of your classes. So if you teach several different periods of the same course, you just make one assignment for all the periods, but then you could sort the submissions by those different class periods. Um, in a discussion, you don't have that option. There's no way to sort. And if you're a middle school or high school teacher, I wouldn't want 120 kids all in the same discussion because it's going to be a lot to keep track of and kids across different periods are going to know each other. So the discussion may not flow well. So when you use discussions, I do recommend that you make multiple copies of the discussion and then put permissions on each of the different period discussions. So let me show you how to do this. Um, so you'd make your original and then up here on the upper right hand corner click on the three dots and then just say copy. I'm going to copy this to the exact same course in the exact same folder and just say copy. So I'll leave everything alone. It's going to tell me that the new one was made. I'm going to then go to that new one and I'm going to edit it and for my sake I recommend that you go ahead and put the period number on there and then that way you know which one's which. The kids are only going to see the one that you give them permissions to see but you're not going to know which is which if you don't put it in the title. So 
designate that, hit save. Now, to put permissions on something, and this works across anything within its learning. Um, you can put permissions on a folder, permissions on a test, permissions on a note, a page, whatever. And this is a great thing to do if you have a special population of students that you're giving them different things from everyone else. Um, permissions just says who can or cannot see that particular item. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to, go, once again, go to those three dots, upper right hand corner, and I'm going to choose permissions. And it's going to give me a choice. Who can add posts or start new threads? Who can view the reports? Who can edit? Detailed overview. I'm just going to choose this top one. Who can add posts and start threads? Now, what you see on my screen is the groups for this particular course. So we talked about earlier, the groups are your different periods. So I got group one and group two. Um, so I would say, okay, this one is going for group two, and I would check the box for group two. I click add. It's going to show up over here on the right that that is who's going to have permissions, and then I'm going to hit save. Now, before I hit save, I want to show you something else. By default, it typically comes up to the groups, but notice if I click this radio button for participants, you're going to see all the students in your class. So this is where if you're doing a special um, folder or item that you only want specific students to see, I would choose participants and then check the students that you want to allow to see that item, click add to put them over here, and then hit save. Now, I say all of this, but there's a caveat. It's learning is going to be changing permissions right at, be, right at the beginning of the school year. So this is going to look different. Hopefully it's going to be so much easier and not as clunky as it is now. So that's why I've kind of saved this video here to the end, um, knowing that there were changes coming. But I wanted to go ahead and share this with you now. Um, just make sure after you've added anybody over here for permissions, do hit save. And then now only that period or that specific group of students can see that element. Um, if you have more periods, once again, copy it, change the title so that you have that period, and then apply the permissions for that particular item. I hope this helps you know what a discussion is, you feel more comfortable using it with your students, setting up those permissions. Um, this may be a great way to start your school year, just introductions, you can introduce yourself and then ask the students to introduce themselves back to the rest of the class. Um, just multiple ways you can use this and hope you enjoy it.